I can still remember as a child the excitement of being allowed to stay up later than we were ever allowed to stay up on December the 31st. Often with family and friends gathered for a party, we would be allowed to stay up and watch on TV as the ball dropped in Times Square, marking the beginning of a new year. I remember sometimes as a child sitting there watching the excitement of the people in the crowd and, and thinking to myself, you know, we only live uh, maybe a little bit more than a half hour outside of Manhattan. I wonder if I will ever be in that crowd cheering in the new year. I will tell you my fascination with that ended probably in high school and today as an adult, I can't ever imagine it now. But the end of one year, the beginning of another. You know, in my family, January the 1st marks a different kind of ending and a different kind of beginning. My mom had one sister, Lillian. She's pictured there with my cousin Karen many years ago. That picture was taken. Lillian died on January the 1st, 2019, two years ago. And then in the upper corner, from the other side of the family, is my father's mother, Anne. She was born on January the 1st, 1913. They were two very different women from different generations. My grandmother was a lovely woman. She had a more complicated personality. Lillian was also lovely. She was a little bit more outgoing. She liked to dance. She was a very friendly person. Both of them, coincidentally, were widowed when they were young. In fact, they both lived more years as widows than they did as married women. In today's gospel, we hear about Mary, the mother of Jesus, who reflects on all the things that has ha have happened to her in her life. She reflects on them in her heart. I think of my grandmother and my Aunt Lil. They were women who reflected on the events of their lives. They both lived through very challenging times. My grandmother was born five years before the pandemic of 1918 took place. My aunt was born during the Great Depression, and she lived her childhood through the Second World War. Yet both of them became women who treasured the things that mattered, faith and family and friends. So on January the 1st, my family, we always think about these two important women in our family's history, our family's story. January the 1st, the end of one year, the beginning of another. How many of us actually thought back in March that this pandemic, the lockdown, would probably be over in a couple of weeks, maybe by the end of the spring, certainly by the beginning of the summer, we would be back to normal. So it's hard to believe for me, I suspect for you as well, that it will be almost a year that this pandemic has gripped us, has challenged our journey, and there will be many effects of this pandemic that will continue into this new year of 2021. I think it is no small thing if we take the time to reflect on the past year, to look deeply in our heart at the things that matter as Mary did, it's no small thing that the year this pandemic took place was 2020. 2020 are those numbers that are usually used to describe good vision. And despite whatever challenges and difficulties we have faced, I think this was the year that our vision of faith improved because we saw the world as Jesus sees the world. We saw the struggles and the inequalities we saw the fears and the sorrows of others and recognized ourself in them. But with that vision of Jesus, we also saw the blessings. We saw the power of grace. We saw that we can make sacrifices for a greater good. And we saw the heroism of people that perhaps before 2020, we just considered ordinary people doing their job. In Luke's gospel, as is in today's mass, it says, Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. 
she would do what Jesus would later call all of his disciples to do. That includes us. To take time to pull back, to reflect, and to think about what God is saying to me in the events of my life. Now, I could ask you to look back at last year, to name the blessings, the challenges, to think about the moments of grace, to remember the moment your heart might have been broken, maybe the moment that your heart was filled with joy, maybe the moment when your heart was united to the heart of somebody in desperate need. And that's the kind of reflection that all of us must do. But today, as we end one year and begin another, I invite you to take a moment and to reflect. What did you learn about yourself over the past year? How did you understand in some deeper or new way what it means to be a disciple of Jesus? How has your understanding and living of the Catholic faith been challenged and strengthened? And what are you bringing of that into this new year? You know, I think of my grandmother, January the 1st, 1913, on that very same day, the United States Post Office began the parcel post system in this country. The delivery of packages and parcels larger than envelopes to people around our nation it was probably not as fast as uh, Amazon Prime is today. You order it now, you have it by tomorrow at noon. But it was innovative because people were to, able to get what was important to them, to get messages, if you will, to others in a better and an easier way. I think about that as we enter into this new year. You know, in every generation, for my grandmother, for my Aunt Lo, people have made sacrifices. They've done their part so that a new beginning can take place. And they've done it by finding new ways of taking risks so that the message of Jesus can be delivered, if you will, to others who are making the journey with us. I think that's what we're called to as we begin 2021. Yes, we will look back, but we have to look forward. We must look forward today and embrace a call to live that message of Jesus, to deliver it to others, not by returning to normal, but by being open, by taking risks, by allowing our lives to be used in some new way, no matter where we are on the journey, no matter what our age, so that others will know Jesus through us. You know, I think about these two women, and when I think about both of them, food comes to mind. My grandmother, who was really not a cook, uh, I always think about her at Christmas time because she made pierogies, Eastern Europeans of all uh, countries eat pierogies, but she made them, they were baked, not fried. And I loved those, they were baked, not fried. And then my Aunt Lil, who was not really a foodie, but she made this delicious dessert called cracker cake that I still crave today. Our memories nourish us, don't they? But even more, our memories remind us that it is Jesus who nourishes us with love and who invites us to nourish others with that love as well. To you and to all those that you love, I wish a peaceful, joy-filled, better, safer, healthier, and happy new year.